Hey guys, this is video number four of my classroom management series, and today we will be talking about a classroom behavior plan. In any classroom, there needs to be some sort of behavior plan put into place, or else it will be difficult for students to know how to follow your rules and expectations. In this video, I will share with you what my behavior plan is, and I will also share with you what I do for students who are interrupting the learning process. So in my classroom, I use Class Dojo, and it is amazing. I have used it all four years of teaching, three years of kindergarten, and one year of third grade, and I have never had a negative experience with Class Dojo. I seriously love it. You guys, if you haven't tried Class Dojo, you need to try it. So for my first three years of teaching, I did Class Dojo separate from my colored clip chart. I did use a colored clip chart in my kindergarten classroom. I had green and then yellow and then red. And then of course, for extra good behavior, I had a purple flower. My theme in kindergarten was ladybugs. So if a student's ladybug got to the purple flower because they had extra good behavior, then they were able to go in my treasure box at the end of the day and choose a treasure box item. So I kept Class Dojo as something separate. Let me show you what I did for my kindergartners. I created this Class Dojo sheet based on something that I found online, but I tweaked it so that it would fit the needs of my students. If the students earned five Class Dojo points, they would receive a sticker. If they received 10 points, they could choose either a fancy pencil, an eraser, or I would write a good note home to their parents. If they got up to 20 points, then they could either bring a stuffed animal to school, they could wear a hat for the day, or they could pick a brain break. If the students got up to 30 points in Class Dojo, they would be able to either choose a treasure box item, sit with a friend in class for the day, or they could get extra computer time. If they got up to 40 points, they could choose to either wear pajamas to school, pick a book to read, or sit in a chair instead of on the carpet, which that's always fun, it's just something new and different. And then if the students got to 50 points, they were able to either do centers in another classroom, extra recess, or eat with a friend at lunch. So those are all of the choices that my students had for Class Dojo. Now this year, I got a fantastic idea from a teacher, pocket full of primary, she teaches second grade. She actually uses Class Dojo in conjunction with her behavior chip, chip clart. Chip clart, clip chart. So I decided to try this with my third graders to see if it would work the same in the intermediate grades. And what I found was that my third graders did not respond to the clip chart as well as my students did in kindergarten. I think that maybe the clip chart is more geared towards the primary grades and maybe you've used it in third, fourth, or fifth grade. Even maybe you're in the higher grades. I don't know. My students did not respond to it in the same way. It could just be the kiddos that I have this year because again, they didn't have that consistency. So they kind of were like, eh, what is this? What do we get from this? So what if I'm on red? So what if I'm on yellow? So it, they just didn't respond to it in the same way. So I went ahead and ditched my colored clip chart for this year. I did keep it because I took the time to kind of print it off and laminate it and make it all cute. But I went ahead and just stored it away for next year to maybe try at the beginning of the year. So what I decided to do is just do Class Dojo. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I set up my Class Dojo points and what skills I have listed for both negative and positive behaviors. So here is my Class Dojo account, and you will notice that right now I'm under the Class Details tab. Under the Class Details tab, when you create a Class Dojo account, you will see your class name, and I just have Room 186 for the year 2016 to 2017. And then it will also ask you to choose your grade level, which this year I am in third grade, so I have third grade right here. Then you will be able to choose an icon to match your class. So I just have a globe, but there are a lot of different icons that you can choose from. I really like this one, um, especially for art teachers. That would be really cute. And a music teacher could have this little icon. So these are a lot of cute ways to just kind of have your class identify as a whole. And then there is a students tab and a parents tab that you will notice. I am not going to click on either of these because I want to keep that private just for confidentiality reasons. But my students are all listed out under this tab and then parent information is here. So each student will actually get a login if their parents want to connect with Class Dojo at home. There's like a little code that they type in at home on their computer or on their phone so that they can log in and see how their students are doing in the classroom. Over here we have a skills tab. So these are the skills that I either have my students earn points for 
or they can actually lose points. So you will notice that right here I have my positive points. These you can create and edit as many times as you want to, but these are the ones that I have found to work best with my students in third grade. My students can earn points for having their area clean, completing their work on time, being extra helpful, following directions. They can earn a point in the hallway if they're walking quietly with their eyes facing forward. They can earn a point for being on task, participating, using kind words and actions, and working quietly. Now take a look at using kind words and actions down here for just a moment. I actually have this one listed as two points because I think that this is a very important skill that the kids, especially in my class this year, needed to work on. So if I catch them using kind words or actions, whether it's with their peers, to me, to another teacher, whoever, I will actually give them two Class Dojo points. I want to show you what it looks like to either add a skill or edit one of your skills. So I'm going to go ahead and hover my mouse over the Using Kind Words and Actions and click this blue button that says Edit. And you will notice that first of all, for each skill, you can again choose your icon that matches the skill. This one I have a group of three friends because this is using kind words and actions so there are other people involved with the student. So you can just kind of take a look at some of these icons to choose from. These icons can be used for both positive and negative behaviors. Okay, so once you choose your icon, you can click Save. Oops, let me go back. And then here you title the skill whatever you would like, whatever you want your students to be demonstrating in the classroom, and then you can choose the point weight. So here I wanted them to be able to earn two points for this skill. And then if I do the drop down arrow, I will see that it only goes up to five points. Now all of the skills can only go up to five points. For the negative skills, you will see in just a moment that those points are the same. It will only take away five points. No more than five points can be taken away at one time. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. So once you have come up with your points that you want for this skill or for each specific skill, you can go ahead and click Save. And then it takes you back to this screen here. Now if you would like to add a skill, you would come down here to the bottom and click this blue and white plus sign to add a skill. Same thing, you can choose your icon, you type in the name of the skill that you want, and then you choose how many points you want that skill to be worth. And then again, you would click save. Now I don't have anything here, so I'm just going to click cancel. And you will see that my students have nine different skills that they can earn Class Dojo points for. Now, if I notice a student is not doing one of these skills, if they are doing the opposite of one of these skills, I will come over to the Needs Work section. Click on that. These are the skills that students can lose points for. So for example, if their area is not clean, they will lose one Class Dojo point. If they are blurting or talking out when they should be raising a quiet hand, they will lose a Class Dojo point. If a student did not follow directions, or they did not complete their work, or if they were running in the hallway, Oh, and I actually just noticed that I have two not following directions. Do you guys see that? I have one up here and one down here. Oh, I have not even noticed that until now. Oh my goodness. Wow, I'm really glad I did this for you guys. So since I actually have two, I'm going to delete one. So edit, I'm going to just delete this one because I have two of those. Okay, that looks better. If they did not use kind words and actions, I will take away two points for that because again, I feel that this is very important, a very important life skill in general. So if they're not using kind words and actions, I do take away two points. If they're not working quietly or if they're off task, I do take a class dojo point away. Down here at the bottom, the kids can actually choose to spend their points based on the reward that they want. So down here, all of these, you can see I have minus five points, minus five points, and minus five points for Lunch Bunch, Stinky Feet, and Treasure Box. I actually got these ideas from Pocketful of Primary, and for 15 points, the kids can choose Stinky Feet if they want to spend points on Stinky Feet. What Stinky Feet is, is basically they get to take their shoes off while they're sitting at their desk and working. So Stinky Feet is actually 15 points. So I would click Stinky Feet three times because five times three is 15. Then over here, and it puts it in alphabetical order, which is why these two are flip-flopped. But for 25 points, if the students decide to save their points and not do stinky feet, they can spend their 25 points on Lunch Bunch. So for Lunch Bunch, they get to pick two friends to eat lunch with the teacher and them inside the classroom.
So it's just kind of a group lunch and it's a lot of fun. For lunch bunch, I would click that one five times so that it would take away 25 points of what they have. Then over here, I have my treasure box. Now treasure box is 50 points if they want to go in my treasure box. So I would have to click that one 10 times. These three are technically not negative or needs work skills, but it does subtract the points when they want to spend them. So they can choose to spend them on any of these things. Now, if you guys have an idea for what I could add for maybe, I don't know, even 20 points, 75 points. One of my students wanted to know what the 100 point reward would be. I could just add the skill here. Choose the icon, put the name of the skill, and then do the point system. So that way they could spend some of their points on something else. Over here, there is a sharing tab. This is if you want to invite other teachers to your class. If you have maybe an aide that can also give your students class dojo points, or maybe you want to add the music teacher, the art teacher, so that they can give your students points, you can do that as well. Class dojo will also let you see a report of each individual student and the points that they are earning or losing. And it will also show you a whole class report as well, which is really nice for you to see as a teacher. One thing I love about Class Dojo is that you can get the parents and other teachers involved, which is awesome. That way all of the adults are on the same page and it really kind of motivates the kids to really try their best. So now that you have seen that, I do need your help with something. My students actually wanted to add some more rewards to our Class Dojo point system. So right now it's just the 15 points, 25 points, and 50 point rewards. But my students, want, I had a student come up to me and say, well, what about if we earn 100 points by the end of the year? If you guys have any ideas for what that could be, please let me know down in the comments because I would love to get some new ideas. Or if you guys think I should go back to something like this, like what I used in the primary grades, let me know. Maybe you guys have done Class Dojo with third, fourth, or fifth graders and have more experience with those particular grade levels. Do you guys think this would work for third grade? I don't know. As of right now, Class Dojo has worked amazing for my students, but I am always open to new ideas. So if you guys do have any ideas or recommendations or suggestions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. It would be really, really helpful, not only for me, but maybe for other teachers who are using Class Dojo as well. So another way that I manage classroom behavior is by using something called wow tickets. Now this is a school-wide program. Every teacher gets a roll of wow tickets at the beginning of the year. They're just these tickets that you can buy at pretty much any store. Now, I love these ones in particular because they have stars on them, but some teachers just have the ones where it just says the word ticket. I do enjoy these, though. I don't know where they got these from, though. I'll have to, if you guys find these online anywhere, maybe on Amazon or something, let me know because... I would love to just have these for any classroom, even if it's not a school-wide program, just to kind of carry around. Now, what our school does is they take these WOW tickets, and if a student does something that demonstrates one of our school roles, being respectful, responsible, or safe, or showing one of the pillars of character, which I sang in my other video, I'll link that down below. But if one of the students is showing one of those behaviors and is doing a really nice job, they can get a wow ticket. Sometimes they can even get two or three depending on what they're doing and how amazing of a job that they're doing. So I have my para pros give students wow tickets. I give my students wow tickets. They can get wow tickets for walking quietly in the hallway. They can get a wow ticket for working quietly. They get wow tickets for keeping their area neat and tidy. They can get a wow ticket for working really hard in their work and turning their work in on time. Students can earn wow tickets for pretty much anything as long as they are doing what they need to do and if they're going above and beyond, sometimes I'll give the students two or three WOW tickets. When the students get 10 WOW tickets, they go ahead and write their name and then three for third grade and N for Nichols on the back. And then they go ahead and take them up to the office and there are these giant tubs in the office. One I believe is for a kindergarten and first grade, then there's a second and third grade, and there is a fourth and fifth grade tub. So my students will throw their tickets into the third grade tub and every Friday our principal does a WOW ticket drawing. Whoever's names that she calls, she calls usually about 10 names. Those students get to eat lunch with her and she also gives them a prize. It's usually like a pencil, a bookmark, sometimes even chapter books. If your school does not have any kind of ticket system, you could always just do this in your own classroom and have some kind of prize for your own students. These are super easy, super cheap, and I think you can even find them like at Walmart over in the office supply section. Now I do wanna let you know that I actually have 
three students that are on individualized behavior plans. They are on a check-in, check-out point system. So what that entails is basically they earn two, one, or zero points for each portion of the day based on them being respectful, responsible, and safe. The plans vary depending on the child, so each child has their own skills that they are working on. I did go into a little bit more detail about these behavior plans in my All About Me posters and behavior plan video, so I'll make sure to link that down below if you are interested in that. So really Really quick, I do want to touch on the consequences that I have put into place for students that continue to interrupt the learning process because we all know that this is still going to happen no matter how good your classroom management is. There are still going to be bumps in the road and your days are not going to be perfect. There are still going to be students that are interrupting that learning process at various points in the day. So when I see a student that is doing something that he or she should not be doing and they know that they shouldn't be doing it, usually all I have to do is look at that student, kind of give them that teacher look. You guys know what I'm talking about. That teacher look. Sometimes that's all they need and then they're back on track. If that doesn't work, then I give them a verbal warning. So I will let them know the behavior that I'm noticing and I will tell them what I want them to do. If a student continues the misbehavior, then I go ahead and have a conference with that student. So basically what that means is I either go over to the student or I have the student quietly come to me. I never embarrass a child in front of the class. I will just kind of chat with them about what is causing them to not do what they need to be doing, kind of what that trigger is and what they need. I usually try to use the term, how can I help you? Because if you use words like, why aren't you listening? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Those kinds of phrases just, it, it sounds very negative and I like to focus on the positive. I think that really helps with classroom behaviors. So I usually say, how can I help you? What do I need to do as your teacher to help you learn, to help you focus, to help you get your work done? If the student continues to get off task or is interrupting the learning process, I actually have two reflection tables or break tables as I call them that are right outside my classroom door. I do have almost a third of my class on IEPs and I do not have an aid. So what I like to do is let them go take their break. They take their calming caddy out there or a book or something that can help calm them down and they sometimes it's just a sit there without anything, but I let them sit out there where I can still see them because the classroom door has to stay open and they calm themselves down and take a break until they're ready to come back into the classroom and join us. Usually the behavior does not go past this and this I've only used really with two of my students for the majority of the time. The other students, they really just need that teacher look and they are good to go. Sometimes they just need to be pulled out of that environment for a few moments just to kind of rejuvenate and refocus. And that way, as soon as they step back into the classroom, they're good to go. I actually have a student who, when he gets frustrated and upset, he really gets frustrated and upset. And I mean, kicking tables, kicking chairs, I mean, all over the place, screaming, no, no. You guys, like, he needs a break. He needs to take a break. It's not necessarily a misbehavior. It is an interruption of the learning process. So in order for this student to learn, and in order for my other students to learn, it is best if this particular student goes out of the room where I can still see him and takes a break, or he is allowed to go down to one of the other third grade teachers down the hall and visit with her for maybe five to 10 minutes. And then when he's ready, he comes back to our classroom and he's ready to learn and he's done. Usually he doesn't even remember why he was frustrated in the first place. So this technique really works for some students. I mean, get to know your students. What do they need? What do they need to learn? How do they respond? Students respond to things in different ways. So if the misbehavior or interruption is really getting to the point where it's disturbing our classroom completely and my other students cannot learn, then that's where I draw the line. When you're thinking about consequences for your students, you have to make sure that your consequence matches the continued misbehavior. What I notice a lot is that when students do something that they're not supposed to do, the consequence is not matching the misbehavior. And that is not effective because the students don't understand that they have to do this because of this misbehavior because they don't match. Let me give you some examples of consequences that I use in my classroom where the consequence matches the behavior. If I have a student who is talking instead of listening to the teacher 
or listening to one of their friends that are speaking, or if I just hear a student that is talking completely during work time when it's supposed to be a quiet work time, I actually make them put their head down and there is no talking. And if a student has to put their head down without talking because they were talking so much during work time, they do not like it. If a student is refusing to do work, I always give my students a choice. You can either do it now or you can do it later during recess. Your choice, usually they pick to finish it now. If a student is running in the hallway, first of all, that is not safe because they could either fall and get hurt or they could bump into somebody else and hurt somebody else. So if they are running, I actually have them practice walking outside so that they know how to use their walking feet. If a student throws something across the room, I make them go pick it up right away. So a lot of times, especially in third grade, kids try to throw things into the trash can from far away, kind of like a basketball into the hoop. Well, a lot of times they miss you know, they're kids. So I always make sure they go pick it up right away because if not, then our floor becomes a disaster. And I am not okay with that. And of course, you are probably going to get some, uh, mm, some grunting because they don't wanna go pick it up. Well, don't throw it in the room then. You have to go pick it up. If it continues, then I just take the item away. For example, when my student threw a pencil box across the room, I just took the pencil box and put it up in the cabinet. It was up there for a week. And then on the following Friday, he quietly came up to me and said, Mrs. Nichols, can I please have my pencil box back? And we conferenced again about why I took it away and the consequence matched the behavior. He threw the pencil box, I took the pencil box away. If the interruption is very serious, such as bullying, punching, kicking, hitting, anything along those lines, I absolutely will refer the student to the Dean of Students and usually they will get ISS because if it's a serious behavior like that, the student should not be around the other students in the classroom because it's either a safety issue or it's just so disruptive that the other students cannot learn. I'm going to admit it to you guys, I do take away recess sometimes because that is the policy that is in place at our school. And I have to say, I don't agree with it 100% because really the consequence is not matching the behavior. It's, it's not matching unless the behavior is something that's happening at recess. So for example, I had a student who was having some issues getting along with friends on the playground during recess, and I am not out there for lunch recess. I am out there when I take my own students out to recess, but my students go out for recess every day before lunch, and there are some aides that are out there with them, so I am not out there. But I guess some of my students were having some difficulties, one in particular, and so he was missing recess every single day. He had to go up to the front office for like an entire week because he did not know what to do and what was expected of him at recess. He was hitting friends, there was bullying going on, so it just wasn't a good situation. So in order to remove him from that situation, we did take away recess. Again, if a student doesn't finish work or if there's something that I need to chat with them about, I will sometimes keep them in with me while the other students are at recess. And then once I see the students through the window kind of go line up for lunch, then I will send the student up to the cafeteria to go get their lunch. So the ultimate goal for a behavior plan is to focus on the positive and really just prevent those behaviors. You can do this by, first of all, well, when you catch your students doing something great, praise them. Let them know, hey, I really loved when you were such a good friend to so-and-so. Wow, I love the way that you helped so-and-so stack their chair. Thank you so much for sitting crisscross applesauce and being ready to learn. I see that so-and-so has their pencil and so-and-so has their pencil and so-and-so has their pencil and they are ready to start math. You can also really prevent a lot of misbehavior again by giving the students breaks. A break could just be up to five minutes of just kind of sitting, calming down, giving them that safe place to calm down, collect their thoughts, and get refocused. Most of the time, the student will come back on their own without me having to go prompt them and ask them, hey, are you ready to come back and join us? Also, a lot of times, if my students are getting chatty on the carpet, I might just say to them, <clears throat> I'm sorry, did you have something to share with us? And then usually they quiet down, or I will say, okay, who's gonna make the better choice here? And usually one of the two students will say, I am, and they'll move and they separate on their own. I usually don't have to say, okay, you two separate. Okay, you two move away from one another. Okay, stop talking, stop this, stop that. No, focus on the positive. How can you reword or restructure what you're saying to your students? Keep it positive. Focus on preventing those misbehaviors. So in the long run, it really makes managing your classroom a breeze. All right, you guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Just remember to develop your behavior plan based on what your students need. What works for my students may not work for your students. I have learned a lot through the process of trial and error and working with different types of students. Know your kids. What do they respond to? Do they respond to breaks? 
Do they respond to stickers, to wow tickets, something tangible that they can hold in their hand? What do your students respond the best to? Once you figure that out, you can really develop a behavior plan that works for your students and will help with your classroom management. Thank you guys so much and please click that like button and be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thanks so much guys, see you soon, bye.